a 27 year old woman from Sweden landed in New Delhi for a simple surgery to remove a benign tumor the operation went fine but soon after she developed a severe infection that no doctor could treat not in India not even in Sweden her infection was caused by a bacteria carrying something called NDM1 short for New Delhi metallo beta lactamase it wasn't just any infection it was a superbug resistant to almost every known antibiotic this wasn't a local hospital problem it was the warning shot of a global crisis a crisis quietly brewing in our backyard now let me ask you what happens when the medicines that saved millions suddenly stop working we often think of pandemics as something dramatic fever isolation wards global panic but there's another pandemic unfolding slowly invisibly and far deadlier antimicrobial resistance or amr now what exactly is that simply put antimicrobials are the drugs that kill or stop the growth of microorganisms these include antibiotics for bacteria antivirals for viruses antifungals and antiparasitic drugs but over time these microbes evolve just like us they adapt learning how to survive even in the presence of these medicines when they do these medicines stop working that's antimicrobial resistance and when bacteria becomes resistant to most antibiotics they turn into what scientists call superbugs these are not sci-fi villains they are real microscopic and already inside hospitals farms and water bodies worldwide superbugs kill more people each year than hiv or malaria by 2050 if we don't act they could kill 10 million people annually which is more than cancer and the country at the center of this storm india india is infamously called the amr capital of the world according to a recent un report around 41% of the blood stream infections reports came from china india and pakistan combined we consume more antibiotics than any other country on the planet earth this is about 13 billion doses in a single year why because in india antibiotics are often treated like painkillers we walk into a local pharmacy ask for something strong for our sore throat and walk out with powerful antibiotics no prescription no diagnosis nothing this overuse and misuse have created the perfect breeding ground for resistant bacteria let's take two examples calbacillus pneumoniae a bacteria that causes pneumonia and sepsis and acetobacter baumani known to infect icu patients in india these bacteria are now resistant to even carbapenems the last line of defense antibiotics used when everything else fails to put that in perspective if anyone is in a hospital in delhi or mumbai with a severe infection caused by these bacteria there's a real chance that no antibiotic can save them now amr didn't just appear one day it's the result of decades of small mistakes in our homes hospitals farms and factories let's break it down simply firstly the human misuse problem india faces a strange paradox some people have no access to antibiotics while others use them like candy in rural areas people may die because they can't afford or access antibiotics at all meanwhile in urban centers people take them for viral fevers where antibiotics don't even work see antibiotics kill bacteria not viruses so if we take them for the flu they are useless but each time we misuse them the bacteria inside our body gets a little smarter over time they learn how to resist this drug then comes the environmental problem india is one of the largest manufacturers of antibiotics in the world but the same factories that produce life saving drugs also discharge waste water full of antibiotic residues into rivers and soil imagine a drain near a pharmaceutical plant it carries traces of antibiotics every single day the bacteria in that water slowly gets exposed to these low doses they won't die but they adapt they develop resistance scientists call this environmental selection pressure in simpler words our rivers and soil have become breeding labs for superbugs this means even if we have 
never taken antibiotics, the resistant bacteria from the environment can still find their way to us through water, food or contact. The problem doesn't stop with humans. In poultry farms, antibiotics are often mixed with animal feed, not to treat disease, but to make animals grow faster. The more antibiotics they get, the bigger they grow. But those same antibiotics also breed resistant bacteria in animals. When humans eat the meat, drink the milk or even handle the animals, those resistant germs can transfer to us. Another major factor is India's sanitation. This challenge amplifies AMR like fuel to a fire. Poor waste management and untreated sewage mean bacteria, including resistant ones, easily mix into drinking water. Hospitals too become superbug factories. Poor infection control or lack of sterilization allows resistant bacteria to spread rapidly. So technically, we might enter a hospital for surgery and sometimes we might leave with a resistant infection that wasn't even part of the problem. The human cost of this crisis is heartbreaking. Every year in India, over 50,000 newborns die from infections that no antibiotics can cure. In total, around 6 lakh lives are being lost in India each year due to resistant infections. And then there's the economic cost. Treating a resistant infection can wipe out a family's saving. Many end up selling land, jewelry or livestock just to buy stronger drugs. Drugs that might not even work. But here's the hopeful part. India isn't sitting idle. In 2017, the government launched the National Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance, a roadmap built around something called the One Health Approach. Under this plan, India focused on raising awareness about antibiotic misuse, improving infection control and hygiene in hospitals, tightening regulations of over-the-counter antibiotic sales and promoting research into new drugs. One visible success is the Red Line campaign, where a red line is printed on antibiotic packs to remind people that these medicines are prescription only. It's a small visual nudge, but in a country of 1.4 billion, small nudges matter. In 2023, India achieved something remarkable. It developed its own antibiotic after 30 years, nephithromycin. It is used to treat community-acquired pneumonia, which is a common infection that increasingly becoming drug-resistant. What's exciting is that nephithromycin was entirely developed in India through collaboration between public institutions and private pharma. It is reportedly 10 times more effective than existing drugs for certain resistant infections. This is more than just a scientific breakthrough. It's a symbol of hope. It shows that India can lead not only as a producer of medicines, but also as an innovator of solutions. Having said this, the war is far from over. Policies exist, but implementation has to be strengthened. Many states lack funds to execute AMR programs effectively. Pharmacies still sell antibiotics illegally. Wastewater treatment remains inadequate. We need stronger governance, better coordination between center and states, and stricter penalties for violators. And most importantly, we need to make diagnostic tools that help doctors to identify infections quickly available everywhere. Because if doctors can know exactly which bacteria is causing the illness, they won't have to rely on broad spectrum of antibiotics. Antimicrobial resistance is not a distant future problem. It's already here in our water, in our hospitals, and sometimes even in our bodies. But here's the truth. The crisis is man-made, which means it's also reversible. If we act now, India can change the global narrative from being called the AMR capital to becoming the innovation capital for antibiotic stewardship. The choice is ours. Do we continue this silent erosion or do we protect the very foundation of modern medicine? Because the day antibiotics stop working, even a small cut, a dental surgery or a childbirth could once again become life-threatening. This isn't just a medical issue, it's about the future of humanity.